Hi, and welcome back to Care Week, a week of free services from the Center for Relationships. It's great to see all of you again this evening. Uh, again, I'm AJ, and I'm the brand director here at the Center, and I'm here to welcome you to Gottman's Seven Principles Workshop Info Session, led by Miss Toya Foster. So for those of you who aren't familiar with us, the Center for Relationships is a community counseling and outreach center in the Austin, Texas area. And we provide mental health counseling to individuals, couples, groups, and families. And we also provide educational resources like the one here today. Uh, this is our eighth annual Care Week, and it's our second year keeping it fully virtual, so we love being able to reach a unique new group of people, and on that note, uh, please, in the chat box, let us know where you're from. We always love to hear it. Uh, we're coming from Texas, but I know there's a lot of people um, from around the country with us. And on that note, I'd love to announce and introduce our facilitator. This workshop is led by Toya Foster. Toya is a licensed professional counselor who provides comprehensive psychological care for couples and individuals. Toya is Gottman Level 2 trained and works with expertise in trust recovery, rebuilding relationships, family of origin issues, and anxiety and emotional support for life's challenges. Toya believes in the potential of what has been broken or hurt to be healed in a safe, supportive, and non-judgmental environment. And on that note, Toya, please take it away. Hi, thank you, AJ. Woo! Care Week 2022. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this info session. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, thank you for joining me um, for this Gottman Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work info session. It's an information session um, as a lead up to the Gottman Seven Principles workshop that I'm going to be um, facilitating. Um, where's my other screen? That I'm going to be facilitating uh, later on this month. So we'll talk about that. So today, um, again, this is the Gottman Seven Principles for Making Relationships Work info session. And I want to thank everyone for joining me in the info session um, today um, and for showing up on behalf of maybe yourselves and your relationships. This evening, we're going to spend some time again talking about the workshops. And my intention is to offer IVL in virtual live the opportunity to hear some research um, about the Gottman seven principles and about how this workshop or program came to be. We're gonna talk about the program itself and have you um, or give you the ability to ask questions about the program. With a show of hands, how many of you have heard about um, Gottman, John Gottman, his work, maybe his books, maybe um, you've read a book, maybe you've attended a similar or different workshop before, maybe um, you know them. So we have several people, yeah, nice, that have raised their hands. Um, and again, as uh, AJ mentioned, I'm gonna raffle off some Gottman goodies to um, whoever is around when I finish doing the presentation part of the workshop um, to some lucky winner, um, don't have to attend the workshop, but just as attending this info session and for hanging in there with it is a really great, great way to say thank you. So let's get started. I am Toya Foster, the workshop facilitator, and AJ so kindly did a wonderful invitation, or what did she do? Hmm, she announced who I was. Yeah, <laughs> introduction. Um, I'm a psychotherapist, and I'm, ex I'm an expert relationship counselor. Um, I'm Gottman level one, two, and three trained in the Gottman Couples Method, and I'm also certified in the Gottman Seven Principles Program as a leader. I do specialize in working with couples who have hurting relationships due to conflict or disconnection, trust breaks, including infidelity. I also work with couples on the brink of divorce. 
Uh, I'm not sure why, but th these are the particular type of couples that really interest me. I work with couples and business owners regarding um, finance, money, betrayals, also couples. Um, and my desire is to help couples or clients by giving back to them um, using the most researched and effective tools available. I remember when I was married and I went to a couples therapist, I did a lot of research finding out what's the best, you know, um, type of couples therapy there is and who's doing it and where can I get it and all of those questions. And even at that time, I found out that it was Gottman's couples um, therapy because of the research, the scientific research had a lot of validity and meaning for me. So we're going to talk about it a little bit today as we go through. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the, the chat box and AJ will flag me because I'll just keep talking and talking, but she'll flag me and let me know um, when there's a question that I need to pay attention to. I will. Mm -hmm. So the seven principles for making marriage work couples program is based on the New York Times um, bestseller, which um, over a million copies of the book has been sold um, in 2015 the book went through um, a refresh and was updated in many ways um, as more research that John Do Gottman had done had become available, which is really interesting. Um, so for the past 40 years, Gottman, John, Dr. Go John Gottman, uh, more specifically, who's now a professor um, of emeritus at the University of Washington and has studied more than 3000 couples did you hear that? He studied more than 3,000 couples, including divorce, uh, I'm sorry, in research and including in his divorce prediction, which he became very famous for, um, and over 4,000 couples in intervention and treatment research. That's a lot of couples. Dr. John Gottman is the author of over 200 published academic articles and the author and co-author of more than 40 books, right? It's lots of books um, regarding couples mainly, but also about babies and families um, and infidelity and trust recovery. Um, he was voted um, top 10 influential therapists um, by the Psychotherapy Network publication and his breakthrough research on marriage and parenting have earned him new, numerous awards. In addition, he and his wife, Dr. Julie Gottman, have trained over 200,000 therapists across the world. I am one of them. John Gottman's research um, started back in the 1970s. Many of us weren't born then, but um, 10 years after he began to do a lot of research. And when I say research, he's a mathematician and a statistician. So he was doing like the real research with lots of stats and numbers, coding, lots of things. Um, 10 years after he started that research, he moved to Seattle uh, with his wife, Julie Gottman, who's a licensed psychologist. Um, and one of the favorite stories that he tells about he and his wife in their early days with his research, right? He had 10 years of research and he wasn't really doing anything with it. They were out on a kayak, which is something that they enjoyed doing together. And they were talking and he was telling her about all these couples he was researching from all over and how much data they were getting and the data meant this and the data meant that. And did you know this? And um, she said, eh, does anybody read your stuff? And he said, well, probably the two and a half people who read academic, you know, research papers and my students who are required, required, required to read it for my classes. Um, and she said, um, I think that you should be putting your research findings out in front of people, especially therapists. We would love to have this information to help us, you know, really target our work and understand our work with couples. And so she was really the um, say wind beneath him going on to publish the research in a more um, in, a, in a way that was more helpful for people to understand and more specifically for couples who were working I'm sorry for therapists who were working with these couples um, which has really been important a lot of his research goes into the couples therapy that we do Gottman couple, method couples therapy um, and this program, the seven principles for making marriage work, is a di direct result of that 
uh, research, uh, Dr. Gottman and his colleagues brought a multi-method model approach to measuring couples processes. And I'll get into what some of those processes were. Um, for example, in the 40 years of his research, they scientifically analyzed the habits of married couples and established a method of correcting the behaviors um, for, say, couples or marriages that were on the rocks. He and his colleagues have studied hundreds of couples, maybe thousands, including newlyweds and long-term couples. He interviewed couples and videotaped their interactions. He even measured their stress levels by checking their heart rates and their sweat flow, their blood pressures, their immune functions, and then followed those couples annually to see how their relationships were going. This research had never been done before. Ultimately, the work that he did helped couples focus on each other and the small day-to-day -day moments that strung together make up the heart and soul of any relationship. It's this transition and the methodology and, and the results, or actually, what does the research mean to us? How, how is this research going to be helpful for us and how to do it, how to put it into practice and how to put it into work? This is something that was never done before. One of the strengths of the seven principles approach is its versatility in addressing all stages of a relationship. So it doesn't matter whether you're just road testing your relationship um, before you make a permanent commitment, or if you've already committed to your relationship or you're already in a committed relationship and you wanna bolster and protect what you have to make sure that it lasts and lasts, um, it doesn't matter if you and your partner are facing dramatic life changes or challenges. The seven principles that are in the book and in this program will help you stay connected. Following the guidance from the book and program also can rescue marriages that are already deep in danger. And in the book, um, which we'll get to, there's some talk about that for couples who are on the brink. This workshop is being presented virtually on Saturday, February 28th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central, uh, Central, what is it, AJ? Central. So there's Central Time, there's Central Standard Time, and then there's Central Distant Time? Central, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Standard Time. Uh, Thank you, Rose. <laughs> um, it's a standard way of calling it. Yes. And this time is included for lectures. Um, nine to five, you'll get lectures. There's time for breaks. There's time for lunch. Um, and it's virtual. So we're going to have this virtual. Um, we'll be together for those eight hours with breaks and lectures, videos. We'll have fun. Some of the questions that you can begin to ask yourself as you engage in this information session are, in my relationship, am I stuck arguing in circles? Does my relationship felt, feel adversarial at times? Am I in a good relationship? And do I uh, want to make it better? This workshop was created with the hope that providing a program based on the latest research about what makes marriages and relationships succeed and what happens when relationships deteriorate and fail will encourage couples to seek and get help and get it much sooner in order to avo avoid the pitfalls of delaying or avoiding seeking assistance and support. The aim of the program is to provide couples with practical tools to enhance and improve relationships while understanding the research-based foundation from which the tools were derived. That's important to understand, like how did they arrive at these seven principles and how do they, they know that if we can accurately do this or that, our relationship can get better. How do they know what makes a happy relationship, right? This program does not provide psychotherapy or couples therapy, nor is it intended to take the place of couples therapy, but it does provide practical skills in, psychoeducation, in a psychoeducational format that can help couples strengthen their race relationships. In one study conducted by uh, both uh, Gottman, John and Julie Gottman, 
Babcock and, got, and Ryan in 2013, they showed that this particular workshop improved couples' friendship and the quality of sex, romance, and passion in their relationship. It also helped couples have less destructive and more constructive conflict discussions. That's a win, right? Especially in our world today, managing the stress of our world today in our relationships. We all have a lot going on. Um, uh, another statistic that, that I think is really interesting and that I share with my couples who are coming to couples therapy is that couples often wait an average of six years from the time they identify problems in their relationship until they seek help. I'm a big, big advocate because I see those couples when they're showing up. This whatever the problem that has been identified is now an entrenched, gridlocked or perpetual issue. I'm a big advocate of seeking help to resolve, learn to communicate around issues or to resolve issues way before six years happens. And this particular program can help with that. Again, this program is based on the New York Times bestseller book written by or penned by John Gottman and Nan Silver. The most practical information that comes from the culmination of his research um, is the, in the book is the seven principles, obviously the seven principles, um, which I also call practical guides that he offers to couple. Now, when I say practical, I don't necessarily mean logical. In fact, they just don't occur to us um, to do, or we haven't been told, right, that these are some things that we want and that we should be doing in our relationships to create fondness, admiration, friendship, to manage conflict. The book aids couples in deepening friendship, the friendship foundation um, of their relationship and helps um, couples learn how to manage conflict successfully, understanding how to honor one another's points of view, on, honor one another's dreams, and also how to create shared meaning within um, their relationship and within their family. One question that I had uh, from someone who said, what does it mean? What does create shared meaning mean? Well, if you can imagine in our house, for example, we have an attic. And if we were on the East Coast, we might have a basement where this happens. But in our attics, we store things that have meaning to us, like our Christmas tree and Christmas decorations or, you know, family photo albums and trunks with our kids' young um, memorabilia in it, right? Their outfits and toys. They're places where we put things that are important, things that we don't necessarily need to see every day and we don't need to talk about every week, but we know they're up there and we know that those things are, are valuable or have meaning to us. Creating shared meaning within the framework of a relationship is important because couples need those things, those moments in time, those events, those experiences, those things that, that exist between them that are important and that have value and that they don't need to talk about every day or maybe even every week, but that when they're brought up, they bring up fond memories. They bring up um, a, a remembrance, remembrance of experiences they had. And sometimes it's fun to relive those and also to continue creating shared meaning. When you know, you're in a relationship and you begin having kids, then families begin to create shared meaning amongst themselves. How do we celebrate the holidays? Well, what do the holidays mean to you? Is it a time that we spend with our family at large? Is it a time that we spend together? Do we decorate? Do we not decorate? Do we have a tree? Do we make a big, big meal at Thanksgiving? Or do we go out to eat for Thanksgiving? So they also incorporate our family's traditions and our relationship traditions. Today is a big day across this country for a relationship tradition. It's Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Valentine's Day as a couples therapist, I must say, is hit or miss because when we're deeply in love and feeling wonderful things about our partner and we want to be able to express that in these really sentimental ways, we can go out and buy 
flowers and candy and heart-shaped things and stuffed animals and we can go out to dinner and just you know really take the day expressing our fondness admiration our love our commitment all of those things to make our partners feel special we this is happening as we're here in this presentation all over the country right as couples are in relationships they begin to take sort of the noticing off of this holiday or take the meaning out of it. So if couples don't create a meaning around what Valentine's Day means for them, is this something that we need to celebrate every year in some big way? Is there some experience that we try to have at least once a year on this day? Sometimes when couples come to therapy, partners will complain that I always give a gift on Valentine's, but I don't get one. That's not fair. Or my partner doesn't do anything for me for Valentine's. It feels just like another day. And so there's one way in which creating shared meaning um, is important because being able to have conversations about what do these romantic holidays mean to you? Is it something that's just meant to create you know, dollars in the global market for chocolate um, this time of year? Or is it something that we want to mean something different or something that has more meaning for us? Back to the book. So the Seven Principles book um, is the framework, part of the framework, if you will, for the program, for the workshop. Since we're doing the course um, virtually, the book actually does not come with the kit that you'll get. And I'll show you the kit that does come with the program. The book is something that you'll purchase in addition to. But the truth is you don't have to purchase the book at all because the couple's guide that, that you will get includes all of the seven principles and all of the practical information that you need, which is also in the book. I will have to tell you, some couples want to have the book and it's 2022, so you can get a copy of this book on your Kindle or, you know, digitally in some, in lots of ways. You can also purchase the hard copy of the book, which is what I have here. Um, it isn't necessary for the workshop. The Seven Principles program is taught by working through the book but we don't need the book because we have the couple's guide on a schedule that fits within the time frame of the class. So depending on how long the class is, we'll cover all seven or maybe five, six or five of the principles. Um, and so the, for the workshop coming up on February 26, we'll cover five of the biggest and the most important principles during class and the other seven, uh, two principles, I'm sorry, will be homework. I do want to mention that before the development of the program, many couples and therapists use the book to support their relationships, but they didn't really have any help with it, right? You had the book and the books would be marked up and earmarked. Usually what would happen is that it didn't always go so well. One partner would read the book and one wouldn't. The book has probably 300 pages in it. And so, and exercises and questionnaires, but you can see how difficult that might be if both partners weren't fully engaged in the book at the same time. Could be a little bit challenging to do. So what's included in the workshop is, digi is a digital copy of the Seven Principles Couples Guide. The Couples Guide um, provides and um, it's provided um, for each participant to get a copy with interactive step-by-step -step exercises in each of the chapters of the seven principles book. This guide is what we'll use to do the exercises, record answers um, related to relationship questions, journaling, interact with key concepts of the book, and incorporate the tools that will help us to build connection, intimacy, and respectful partnerships. Also what's included in um, the workshop book or digital file, I should say, the digital materials that you'll receive is access to the Love Map Open-Ended Questions card deck. The card deck is a fun and effective way for couples to get to know one another's inner lives, increasing um, closeness, friendship, intimacy, 
Um, I have the card deck on my phone. Um, it's free um, through, you know, uh, the Gottman website, and it has questions about intimacy, getting to know your partner, managing conflict, lots of things. And we'll use that in the course to help both people begin to communicate about things that maybe we're no longer aware of, or maybe things that we're not aware of at all. And, <laughs> excuse me, Included in the workshop is my engaging presentation with lectures and videos and demonstrations of how to proceed with the seven principles, right? The opportunity for many um, uh, questionnaires and exercises to be completed by the couples um, in conversation with your partner. So within the included in the workshop, you'll have everything you need to successfully complete this course and have the tools at your disposal and at your fingertip to work um, in your relationship. I want to pause for a minute and see if we have any questions or comments. Okay, I'll keep rolling. So some of the benefits um, of attending the Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work program is that fundamentally, great marriages depend on how you interact daily to strengthen the friendship and the sense of positivity in your relationship. For me, that's the biggest takeaway. If someone who's in a long-term committed relationship, I absolutely positively know that to be true. The Seven Principles um, are identified by Gottman are interrelated. And what I mean by that is improvements in one area will positively improve uh, uh, in the impact in other areas. This is important because couples report many problem areas, as you can imagine, in one area of your relationship. If that problem isn't addressed or taken well, well, taken care of well, you'll begin to have other problems in your relationship, like stop being um, friendly with each other. And if you're not feeling friendly, then you start being, stop being generous or having grace for one another. If you're not being generous or having grace for one another, you're probably not also noticing or commenting on the good things that you find your partner doing. So you're not appreciating your partner. And if you're not appreciating your partner and you're not offering your partner any grace or gratitude and you're not feeling friendly towards your partner, then you're probably not being deliberate in much, much, uh, not finding much positivity in your relationship. And the reverse is also true. So when you begin to feel better in one area, the other areas of your relationship start to feel better. And it can be encouraging to work on your relationship in the context of other couples who are doing the same thing. So that's a huge benefit of attending this workshop, right? to be around other couples who are working on the same thing at the same time that you are. It can also feel less threatening than seeking couples therapy. And it fits into an enrichment model that many couples are familiar with. While attending um, doesn't feel like couples therapy, it can uh, sometimes be used to soften the entry into working on your relationship and to getting help without the stigma that some have about seeking therapy. I can tell you as a couples therapist that sometimes, you know, when people show up for therapy, there's one partner who's gung-ho and that's who's all in and the other partner is like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how I feel about talking about this with you. And I don't know if this is going to work. Going to this workshop eliminates all of that threatening um, those threatening feelings that you have or the feelings that you might have that, you know, this might not work. Um, this can be a bridge into therapy for, for some couples um, and for others, um, it's a great way to do something together. Both people are pouring into the relationship, um, identifying the parts of their relationship that are good and that work and the parts of their relationship that could use a little bit more work. So for example, I have up on the slide, learning to notice when your partner is trying, right? And then how to respond. Learning how to accommodate each other's needs without sacrificing your own. That's huge in today's you know, world. 
Um, signing up for a class on marriage and relationships also helps to eliminate some of the uncertainty and hesitation some couples have about working on their relationship on their own. Sometimes they have conversations that just don't go well. Um, also, there are couples who might be hesitant about seeking therapy because there's no clearly defined goals or expectations. They're, they don't know what the structure would be or even what the duration of the couple's therapy would be. In contrast, having a class format does have clearly articulated goals. We clearly spell out the expectations of the work that we're doing and you know the time frames. Starts at nine, ends at five. The class format encourages both partners to work on their relationship rather than one partner working on the relationship alone or reading the book without the other partner's participation. It doesn't do much good. Even if you find yourself in the throes of a doomed marriage, there are steps that you can take to recover or revive your relationship to what it once was. By applying the seven principles, you'll learn in this uh, workshop how to communicate more effectively, how to make agreeable compromises and overcome solvable and perpetual conflicts, and how to gain the skills to address perpetual and solvable problems. This is a big area that I'm mentioning right now that's showing up for a lot of couples right now because we have a lot of problems in our society right now. And learning how to talk about the ones that are most intimately tied to us is something worth knowing. The biggest benefit to attending uh, the workshop is that you and your partner will have the framework, the seven principles, and the tools, the skills, and the practice to begin writing your relationship, whether your relationship is in a kayak, a paddle boat, a tugboat, a canoe, or a cruise ship. I wonder if you were to identify the flotation device for the boat that best describes your relationship, which would it be? I'm wondering if you can put in the chats and AJ, I'm wondering if you can read out some of the answers. Is your relationship more reflective of a kayak, a paddle boat, a canoe, a tugboat, or a cruise ship? Let's see what the people have to say. Thanks, Toya. So we have one person who answered kayak for sure. Uh, I can say for me, it's a great question. Uh -huh. uh, maybe a bit of a paddle boat. I like paddle boats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, right, none of these are bad answers. It all depends on how you feel in the relationship. Kayaks are smaller and they require both people doing the same thing at the same time, right? So that you're gliding across the water. Paddle boats require both people working together creating a synergy, right? And an emotional connection to keep going, to get where you wanna go, working together in harmony. A canoe is also great. Both people have to paddle, right? And if one person isn't paddling in the same direction or at the same speed, sometimes it feels like you could be going in circles, right? If one person's paddling or if the other person is paddling in the opposite direction, then you're probably not going anywhere. A tugboat sounds like what it is. Tugboats can help pull other boats and things out of the water, but more often than not, the tugboat, right? The one person in the relationship might feel like they're driving the tugboat and they're pulling their partner along. And that's a metaphor that can show up many ways in a relationship. And a cruise ship sounds awesome and wonderful. A cruise ship is a big luxury, you know, big luxury ship that has food and drinks and fun times. So you could have a relationship that feels really good, that feels great. You and your partner are good when you're together and you could be at opposite ends of the cruise ship. And that's fine too. There's enough things on board for both people to have fun, to be engaging with each other and many areas in your relationship work just fine. All right. Is this workshop for us? 
this workshop is appropriate for couples contemplating engagement, for premarital couples, for couples living together, for couples who've been together for years, for a few years, for a lot of years, for decades. The couple, the program, I'm sorry, can be started regardless of where you are in your relationship or the number of months that you have in the relationship. Even if both of you feel that your relationship is um, faring well, you can learn more skills and tools to enhance a good relationship. Or if you think that your relationship is filled with lots of str struggles and conflicts, negative feelings, um, unmet needs or desires, this, relation, this program can help you. I want to also note here that this particular workshop is not good for some couples. For couples with severe relationship distress, significant emotional or physical abuse, serious emotional or mental health problems, relationships with serious compulsive behavior, could be gambling, could be sexual acting out or other disruptive behaviors. This program wouldn't, those, those types of couples wouldn't do well in this program. It would be too hard for them to maintain the stability and the ability to work together in the program. So I just wanna put that out there as a side note. If anyone has any questions, if you're contemplating the workshop and you want more information, you can put a question in the chat box and I will be available once I finish with this presentation to answer any questions that anyone has a confidential, confidentially, confidentially, yeah. Okay, you will learn how to foster uh, respect, affection and closeness, build and share deeper connections with each other's uh, inner world, keep conflict discussions calm, break through and resolve conflict gridlock, strengthen and maintain gains in your relationship. Gottman's research found that nine months after attending this workshop, 640 couples had relapse rates of 20%, while standard marital couples had relapse rates of 30 to 50%. That's huge, that's not nothing. In the beginning of these workshops, 27% of couples were at high risk for divorce. Through tracking them, Gottman found out three months later, 6.7% were at risk. So it dropped from 27% of those couples down to 6.7%. And six months later, that risk went to zero. How did this workshop produce these statistics? Could be that when the couples came to couples therapy, there were times when both couples, when both the people or bo both the people in the relationship um, wanted to go mutually um, and participate in this and work together to make the relationship better. I can't stress enough how difficult it is to work on a relationship when there's only one person working, right? If you can imagine the canoe where one person is paddling one direction and the other person is paddling in a different um, direction. It's hard to work on your relationship when there's some level of resistance, uh, resistance to change or resistance to accepting accountability, um, especially if you're the one being given the blame or taking the blame, right? In this workshop, both partners understand that there's a def definite beginning and end to the workshop and that the relationship issues aren't being shared with anyone except one another, you as you perform the exercises and you go through the program, both partners side by side and hearing and learning the principles as they're laid out. You'll do the work, the exercises, the questionnaires, the reflecting in the private um, breakout rooms on Zoom so that nobody can hear the work that you're, do you're doing. You'll just do the work so that you're getting a good chance to um, practice the exercises in real time after you watch a demonstration of the exercises. And again, for 30 years, Dr. Gottman's research scientifically analyzed the habits of married couples and established this method of correcting behaviors that had that helped thousands of marriages that were on the rocks. He helps couples focus on each other and the small day-to-day -day moments. Um, 
to help make these adjustments in the relationship to get the relationship feeling more positive and moving in a flourishing direction. This class is the, was and is designed to strengthen your relationship. Um, if you already have a strong relationship, this class can provide you with insights and tools to make it even better. If your relationship is distressed, this class provides a roadmap for that repair. This class combines teaching and video demonstrations, one-on-one -on -one breakout sessions, and confidentiality is strictly maintained. Couples work privately, again, on the exercises designed to address your real-life challenges in your relationship by completing the practical um, exercises. There isn't any group work or sharing or public disclo disclosure in this workshop. And I am available to support couples one-on-one -on -one during the exercises by popping in to your breakout rooms to see if you have any questions or if you need some support to get through the exercises. The cancellation policy for the workshop is that the fee is non-refundable but transferable to a subsequent um, workshop. Once registered, if unforeseen circumstances prevent you from attending, um, you'll have the opportunity to transfer your fee to another workshop within 12 months of the registration date. However, there is a $75 transfer fee and all classes enrolled um, on a first come first serve basis. If the workshop is canceled by the presenters, um, the option will be given for a fee, full refund or a complimentary transfer to a, a subsequent um, course. I think this is important to note because as we know, things happen. If you're dealing with emotional abuse, domestic violence, unwanted touch or substance abuse, this class isn't going to be appropriate for you. And you should instead seek individual uh, counseling or couples therapy, which the Center for Relationship also offers. I can't take this too lightly. This course won't be effective if you are in a relationship that is dealing with these types of issues. Here are the upcoming workshops. Saturday, February 26, uh, nine to five, Central Daylight Time. It is virtual, it's $450 per couple. Again, you'll get the workshop materials that you need. Sunday, March 25th through May 1st, I'm offering this course by demand for eight weekly sessions. Those days are Sundays, so eight Sundays in a row, we'll meet from 12 to five and I'll offer the course virtually. There are some people who want to take the course at one time, that's great. That works for them. They want to set aside the day and take the course and have the tools and work them. There are some people who want to go step by step at a slower pace, getting the materials that they need and then having the week to implement those and talk about them, come back, we do a little review and then we move forward to the next step. Either way is fine. So I made sure to include both ways that people like to attend um, these workshops um, in this slide. There is more information on our website about the dates for the workshops. You can also register for the workshops there as well. Okay, thank you for joining us. Before you go, remember, we're going to do the raffle, but here's our information for the Center for Relationships and for Care Week. Our contact information, um, our website at address, phone number, and my email address if you'd like to email, email me for more information. Thank you, Toya. You're welcome.